Welcome. In this video, let's use our knowledge of basic algebra to solve several tricky performance management questions. I've got the first question open on my screen, and this comes from the syllabus area, cost, volume, profit. Let's jump in. First thing I'll do is read the requirement. They're asking for some planned activity. Not sure exactly what I need to do at this point. I need to read further. And we find out that the company manufactures a product that it sells for $40 per unit. And they then tell us the product has a contribution to sales ratio of 40%. With this information, I can get a contribution per unit. Now, they tell me this. The monthly fixed costs are $60,000. And with the contribution per unit that we calculate here, we could get the break-even point in units. I think I see where this is going now. The final sentence ties it all together. At the planned activity for next month, or at the budgeted activity, we have a margin of safety of 64,000 expressed in sales value. So I'm going to use some formulas that I know from my studies, and then combined with some basic algebra, I can arrive at this final answer. First formula that I need is the margin of safety and the break-even point. And I know that the budgeted activity minus the margin of safety is equal to the break-even point. And I see they give me that margin of safety of $64,000, if I divide that by the selling price, I will get 1,600 units. So if I can find a break-even point, I could work back and get the budget. And I know that a break-even point in units will be equal to fixed costs over the contribution per unit. And I have that information above. I know that 40 is the selling price, so 40% of that is the contribution. So now I know that the break-even point will be the fixed costs divided by 40% of 40, which will be $16. So for a break-even point, we get 3,750 units. So guys, we're almost there. If we plug the 3750 into that first formula, we know that B minus this is equal to the 37500. And as we just practiced in the previous video to isolate the B, we've got to add the 1600 to each. So 3750 plus 1600, well, that's going to be equal to 5350. Once again, 3750 plus 1600 will be equal to the B, and that comes to 5350, 5000. 350. Answer is C. 
Let's try another question. This one is quite tricky because now we're going to be combining several formulas. We'll find the unknown from one formula and that will pop into the next formula. We'll use that to find another unknown which would then be our final answer. We are still in cost volume profit and we need to find the operating profit if sales increase. Well, let's see what information we have so we can decide what formulas we need to use to solve this problem. Well, we learned Logan Company has an operating gearing of 33%. I'm a little confused there. There is no set formula for operating or operational gearing. You can do it different ways. There's no accounting standard about that. Let's read more. Hopefully we get more info on that. Sales are currently 100 million. Operating profit is 20 million. Now they tell us operational gearing is calculated by dividing fixed costs by variable costs. So we need several formulas here. Let's lay them out and see if the answer or the approach to solving the problem will emerge. Well, let us do a marginal costing P&L. Top line, sales, from which we subtract variable costs. We are left with total contribution. We subtract fixed costs and we get to profit. Let's just plug in what they told us. 100 million are the sales, 20 the profit. What happens if sales increase by 15%? So we would do 1.15 to show an increase by 15%. What's going to happen to our profit? Well, the key is figuring out the variable cost and the fixed cost because our variable costs will move in line with the sales, but the fixed costs will remain fixed. So let's now bring that operational gearing ratio into play to help us. We learned earlier that the operational gearing formula here was dividing fixed costs by variable costs. So fixed costs over variable costs is equal to 0 0.5. 3. Another way of saying that is that the fixed costs over the variable costs are equal to 0 0.33 over 1. Let's move this up here for a moment and come back to our P&L. We have the total costs here in percentage terms up here on the right, but we also know the total cost in monetary terms would be the difference between the sales and the profit. So the total costs would be $80. 100 minus 80 is 20, otherwise known as a balancing figure. We can make a table here. My variable cost plus my fixed cost is equal to my total cost. And we can put a dollar column next to a percentage column. Total cost, we just said, was $80. The variable cost, let's say, is 100%. Fixed cost, 33% of the variable cost. So we can total that, and we have 133. 
Now we're back to a ratio type of problem that we looked at in other videos. So we can get the variable cost by multiplying 80 times 100 divided by 1.33 would give me the variable cost. And that comes to 60. At this point, the fixed cost, it becomes apparent. We know the missing number is a 20. So with this operational gearing formula, we just worked out our costs. Let's plug those numbers into our P&L. We now know that the variable costs are 60. Contribution would then be 40. 40 minus 20 gives me a profit of 20. And we know if sales increase by 15%, then variable costs will also increase by 15%, but fixed costs would remain constant. So that would be $115. The sales, the variable cost would be 69. Let me move this over a little bit. We then get a contribution line, but we don't really need that now. Now we can do the math. 115 minus 69 minus 20 equals 26. That is the answer. $26 million. That was a tricky question. We had two formulas in play. We had the P&L formula and we had the operational gearing formula. We used one formula, the output from one formula moved into the next formula. And with that information, we could get the final answer. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our video, looking at basic algebra in the context of performance management questions. Now, it really doesn't get much more complicated than that. So if you were okay with what we did in these examples, you are ready to jump into your performance management learning materials and start solving questions on your own.